Good morning, and this is Jackie Erickson from The Stitching Post, and today's video is how to do a flying geese block. There's a million ways to do it, but I'm gonna show you one of those million ways. And here's a quilt that we just finished our sample. It's gonna be a store a kit. It's called Filigree, but the pattern is actually called Fly, or Twisted Geese by Zen Chic. So this is what I'm basing my flying geese off on today. Okay, so we're gonna start with, I have my everything pre-cut. I'm a pre-cut person. I like to do that ahead of time. Here's my pile. These are my geese. These are my backgrounds. Then you'd have to actually get the pattern to, to get the rest of it. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to take a, a goose, which is this piece, and I'm going to put a background on it. And in order to get the backgrounds, because these are rather big pieces, they're four and a half inch squares, you need to draw a diagonal line on your fabrics before you begin. I use this ruler here i like this it's very bendable very flexible but it's small enough and it's narrow and it's a uh, it's not too high like the acrylic rulers but you can actually lay it on your fabric it's for drafting if you want to draft anything just draw a pencil line if it's not dark enough do it a little darker okay that's how you get your line you're going to follow now i am using oh it's not on um i'm using dark thread so that you can see my sew line Okay, so now I'm ready to sew my background onto my flying geese or goose because it's singular there. So when I lay it on here, I want to make, I'm left-handed, so I might be doing this backwards compared to most of you. I want to make sure that I'm going to have this V-shape here. Let me grab the pattern. This is what we're doing. I want to make sure I have this little V-shape. That's the background, that's the background. So I have a bunny tail in here, and I always sew with my needle in a down position, so when it stops, it stops with the needle down. That's up to you, just the way I do it. Okay, I'm gonna slide it underneath there and follow that little pencil line. Okay, I only have one tail, so I have to cut it off. You can chain stitch. If you had more of these to do, you could just keep going with it. Well, I, I have some here, let me show you what I mean chain stitching. I'm gonna, I've already got one of these on here, so I'm going to put this one in this direction. And I line up my corners on the outside here. And I'm just going to lift my foot a little bit, slide that under there. I have an old machine. A lot of people, they automatically pops up but my, the foot, but mine doesn't. I'm old fashioned. That's chain stitching. You can keep going, keep going. But I'm going to end my buddy tail and I can take that off. It saves thread and it also saves that wrap nest underneath. So here we have the first on here. So now I want to cut away part of this, but you want to make sure you're cutting on the right side. This is the side I want to cut off because this, I don't want that. So if I fold it over, you can see, I want to keep this. I have cut this off and then I have just that. So try not to do that. Been down that road many times. So I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna use, I like this mat, it spins. I don't really need it spinning today. Don't use that ruler for that. I'm gonna lay it there. I'm gonna put my ruler over a quarter inch and just cut it off. I'm gonna save these pieces. I have a little pile of them here because I can make these cute little squares out of them. And we did a video about this, so you'll just need to go find that video. Okay. I'm gonna put in that pile because I'm gonna save those. Now I'm gonna come over here, press it open. I'm gonna use my Aliso iron, press across the top to get it warm, and then when you flip it over, it flips over easily because it's already warmed up. There we go. And if you want a nice flat, flat seam, you can use flatter. My bottle's almost empty. I need a new one. And it lays flat. We're gonna add our second background to this one. So I have a couple here that I already have marked, okay? So I'm gonna lay it on here, this direction, line up my little corners, and you'll see when I flip it over, there's my flying goose right there. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how to attach these two. And again, go to the end of my bunny tail. Take that bunny tail, stick it under there going. See, I have no threads anywhere. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm going to cut this off. Get in my little save pile. 
press it open. Okay, now that one is ready to attach to the next one. This is my finished size because this particular pattern that I'm working on, these are done in twosies here in the little schematic here. You can see that's how the quilt's put together. So I'm just gonna do two at a time. So that's one finished one. Here's one, here's some finished ones. I will put, I think I'll put a black one with that. This one looks good to me. So I'm gonna line them up like this, flip it over. And then on this side, line up my two corners. If I did this correctly, which it's coming out pretty good, okay. I take a pin and I want to pin. See where that little X is right there? That's where I want my seam to come through. If I did it right, it should be about a quarter inch. Everybody's quarter inch is different. I have a tendency to take a heavy quarter inch. Okay, when you get to your pin, stop and pull it out. Okay. Keep going. I'll make sure this edge is lined up down here. And you're gonna take that bunny tail, stick it on this end, and you're gonna take it off. Okay, I'm gonna press this open. Oh, you know what? We're gonna do open seam. Try and keep it a little consistent there. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over, and I am going to, come on. It's a little bulky with that cup, but look at my point. I'm so proud of myself. My point came out. There we go. Use a little flatter. Check it out. There's my block. That is a flying geese block. That's two of them actually, one, two. And then you can keep hooking up together and make, you know, how, well, in that particular pattern, you'll have to hook them all together. Anyway, that's how to do a flying geese block the easy way. It's called snowball. So, Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.